Okay, now in this section, we'll continue with our concept on interland routing. But this time, we are not going to use a separate physical interfaces. We'll be using uh, the second method that is using sub interfaces. So, one of the major drawbacks with the previous method which we discussed in our previous section or the previous video is if you have a VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, if you want to communicate with them, we need to have two separate physical interfaces because we have two VLANs. So that's something really not recommended. So what we can do is we can go with an alternate option like inter VLAN routing using a sub interfaces. Now in this scenario, what we are doing is we, we are going to have these two ports in the VLAN 10 and these two ports in the VLAN 20. And we are not using a separate physical interface. Instead, we are going to use one common interface, which is going to connect to the router. But now the question is one interface, how it can be a gateway for two different VLANs. So for that, what we are doing is we are going to divide this physical interface into sub interfaces logically inside them. We can, we can, we can do like F0 by 0 dot 10 dot 20 dot 30. You can create almost a very big number of sub interfaces. So each sub interface is acting as a gateway for each VLAN like VLAN 10 and this sub interface will be a gateway for VLAN 20. And if I have VLAN 30, I can create one more sub interface, but at the end physically it is only one interface. But logically, it is separating into three, acting as, as if there are three separate physical interfaces. Uh, that is something logically we are separating. That's what we are doing on the routers. Now, this way, it is going to minimize the number of uh, gateways we require. We can, we can manage uh, multiple VLANs with a one common physical interface by using sub interfaces. And what we do on the router side is we are going to configure this link, the link connecting on this side should be configured as a trunk and the reason is when the VLAN 10 user is sending the traffic it goes to the gateway that is your sub interface and it is going to come back on the same sub interface right and then going to VLAN 20 so which means this link is going to carry multiple VLAN traffic and in case of switching concepts what we have learned is the trunk link is going to carry multiple VLAN traffic so that's something what we are going to do so it's a complete three-step process uh, the first step we are going to assign the ports one and two in the VLAN 10 so let me write down uh, in my screen here so what we are going to do is the first step we are going to assign port number one port number two in the VLAN 10 so this is something I already did and port number three and four in the VLAN 20 so these two ports are in the VLAN 10 and these two ports are in the VLAN 20 so in the second thing we are not using a separate physical interface uh, we are going to configure F0 by 20 port which is connecting to the router will be configured as a trunk port and that particular trunk port uh, okay so trunk port which means this particular port will be configured as a trunk port because it is carrying multiple VLAN traffic and on the third step we are going to create some sub interfaces on the router so sub interfaces on the router so we'll see the commands one by one uh, one by one we'll see so let's let's start up with the switch here on the switch if I go and check show VLAN if I'm I'm going to continue from the previous lab I have port number 1 and 2 in the VLAN 10 and port number 3 and 4 in the VLAN 20 as per the lab requirement anyway 10 is not required I'm not using 10 here I think I removed the connection so I'll remove the connection on the 10 and then I'm going to connect uh, F0 by 0 is going to connect on port number 20 as per my lab requirement okay so the second step i'm going to configure port number 20 which is connecting on on the router switch port mode trunk so once you make this particular link as a trunk port it means that the f0 by 20 is going to carry multiple vlan traffic and the third step i'm going to create sub interfaces on the router so let me let me go to the command line of the router and the first thing already this interface is assigned with some IP addresses as per our previous lab so I'm going to remove them okay so just remove them make them ensure that we don't have any of the previous lab configurations which is conflicting with this lab so I have removed all those things and I'm going to use the interface F0 by 0 no shutdown and no IP address 
So in, if before you create the sub interfaces, we need to ensure that our physical interface has to be in up, up state. And that's something can be possible only with a no shutdown command. And then we need to ensure that we also remove the IP addresses if it is already present. And then to create a sub interface, just you have to give dot here and then any number. That's it. So creating the sub interface, it's very simple. F0 by 0 dot 10. Uh, it can be any number, but I prefer the same number. What what is a VLAN number? That is something recommended. And then we need to say encapsulation dot one cube ten. Now what this command will do is this command tells that this sub interface is a gateway for VLAN ten, and this number must be the exact VLAN number that is mandatory, because when you are creating a sub interface, automatically the router will not decide uh, it is a gateway for which VLAN. So we are saying that this is a gateway for VLAN 10, which means it is going to accept the traffic from VLAN 10. And uh, that, that's what this command is going to do. And then we need to say IP address. IP address, whatever the gateway address we decided. As per my network, I'm using 192.168.1.100 is the gateway address for VLAN 10 users. Done. And then interface f0 by 0 dot 20. Now the same thing I need to do for another VLAN encapsulation dot 1q20. And then switch port, uh, switch uh, not switch port, IP address 192.168.2.100. And then 255.255.255.0. So now if I verify show IP interface brief, now there is a default physical interface which we are not using for anything. It is just unassigned, but we are creating two separate sub interfaces on the routers for internet routing. Now the verification, we can go to any one of the PC. If you go and check the PC, which is my 1.1, I'm trying to ping to 192.168.2.1. I should get a reply. So the traffic goes to router and the router has to forward back on the same interface as a, in the form of a sub interface. You can see it's going and if you try to trace, trace it, it's going to, it's going to give the same output here. So this is how we can do inter VLAN routing by using a separate physical interface. So let me just quickly summarize what we have seen. Uh, in case of inter VLAN routing, what we need to do is we need to ensure that these two ports are in the VLAN 10 and these two ports in the VLAN 20. And then there should be a trunk link configured and on that particular trunk link, we, we need to ensure that um, it should be configured as a trunk. And then on the router side, we need to create sub interfaces. And when you're doing some troubleshooting with the sub interfaces, we need to ensure that we are giving the right VLAN number on the right uh, sub interface. Like this should be the exact VLAN number. Now, when you do this, uh, it is going to be the gateway for VLAN 10 and this should be on the same network as the VLAN 10. The gateway also should be on the same network as the VLAN 10.